Pokemon Sword and Shield did a lot of things. No matter what I say here, people are gonna be upset. Uh, you're watching a video about the graphic design in Galar, so like, Pokemon Sword and Shield did a lot of things really well. Like, have you taken a look around some of the cities? It's like, is that a real business with a real logo? And what's this? Pokemon Jobs? A whole world building gimmick I forgot about? Amazing! I love world building. Uh, up until this point, most Pokemon stores and businesses just have some text and maybe a Pokeball icon next to the shop. It's lame. I mean, look at business logos in the real world. There are all kinds! You got your swooshes, your beveled edges, your flat and simple ones that I don't need to show you because like all of them are flat and simple these days, which is good because of our digital smartphone lifestyles. You just don't like it because old thing good change bad, ooga booga. There's logos that are all text and logos with no text. You've got your cute mascot animals, you've got your cute people mascots, if, if, if you could call, call them cute. You've got your simple single letters, and you've got basic shapes that no one knows how to interpret without context. But then there are logos that are so iconic that they are known the world over, and they don't need drastic updates anymore. And when you start putting logos next to each other, you start to notice soft rules of sorts, like what colors mean. And like, there are whole schools devoted to this kind of thing. So it's surprising that it took this long for graphic logo design to appear properly in the Pokemon world, in the games at least. Well, other than just Pokeballs from various angles, like we see in their fashion all the time, or like evil organization icons. Uh, but now, they're on real businesses. And they're cool! And in this video, we're going to take a look at some of them and uh, just kind of talk about them, judge them for what they are. It'll be interesting, trust me. But looking at them all, uh, first things first, what you gotta know is that the Pokemon world has had its own alphabet for a long time. The older one was deciphered a long time ago and was direct with the Latin alphabet, just different symbols for different letters. But it would seem that the Galar region has its own alphabet too, but it's yet to be properly deciphered. I, in my research I found many attempts and those who claim to have figured it out and it works for the most part, some of those other attempts, but once you start plugging it into all of these logos, it falls apart pretty quickly. Works for some, not for others. Uh, so just know it's some sort of organized gibberish. But anyway, if a graphic designer is making logos in a fictional world, they have to take what makes that world different from our own into account. And in this case, it's that there are Pokemon instead of animals, and the whole of culture surrounds these animals, and that their alphabet is completely different. Sounds like a challenge, so I really commend the graphic designers who worked on these. I wonder if they have a dot .design domain name where they could show off their portfolios. If not, they should really get one. And if you're an artist or designer of any sort, today's sponsor is for you. It's the dot .design domain. The two most important factors to having a creative career are practicing and marketing. You have to really be available to the public as much as possible. I mean, they are the money after all. Especially when you freelance, you would need your portfolio somewhere to show off what you've done. And there's something that just screams unprofessional about uploading your pictures to Facebook to show them to your potential clients. And that's where today's sponsor steps in. Get yourself a dot .design domain name. The perfect domain name to get across your professionalism in this creative world. After all, your domain name is the first thing that every client sees. Go from a boring .com or .me to a much more elegant dot .design, no longer shackled by the corporate sounding .com. Dot .design is already used by tons of big name brands like Amazon, Slack, and even Adobe uses the domain. Dot Design reflects what you do as a designer of any sort. It helps with your branding, and you can learn more and get your domain just by clicking the link in the description below. It's where you go to get a Dot Design domain name. That was me attempting to make a slogan. Uh, anyway, now let's check out that Galaraphic design. Some of these logos are really cool. They belong in an art gallery. Take Mach Motors, for example. Its colors and lines are sharp and hard. It gives it a real steely look, especially with the cool dark blue color. Mach Motors builds vehicles, primarily cars, things that go fast. Maybe hover platforms are in their arsenal. We know those exist in the Pokemon universe, and also that's what this logo seems to look like to me. However, it's also the top of a Garchomp head. It's got the star and everything. Also, this blue color is extremely common with car companies, turns out. Ford, VW, BMW, Subaru, 
Honda, GM, Saab, Volvo, Mazda, Plymouth, and many, many more. It's a steely blue. It's strong, secure, trustworthy. All things you'd like your car to be. So yeah, I think I love this Mach Motors logo. What's next? It's Densoku. Here, we have a logo without text. It's just a stylized silhouette of a dog, specifically Bolt Hunt, the dog Pokemon of Galar. It makes me think of other logos like Greyhound, Jaguar, and Puma. Puma being the most apt because Densoku makes athletic wear, primarily shoes, just like Puma. The choice of a fast and energized electric type dog that likes to run makes it the perfect mascot and logo of the company, wouldn't you say? And a simple logo like this can be easily recolored and stylized on the sides of the shoes in numerous ways, just like the Puma Puma or those Nike shoes with the little swoosh. Simple, but effective. Rondo Floral. Here's a logo that doesn't have a Pokemon in it. Instead, it's just a rose. Fitting, I suppose, and the font is quite pretty too, which you would want with the flower shop, hey? Though, I'm not sure about this rounded triangle or the color of it. From what I remember in the graphic design classes I took and also what I just looked up to make sure I was remembering right, triangle logos can mean a lot of different things depending on which direction they point. Two points down, like this logo, can make it appear to be more grounded and stable. It's easier going and balanced. Whereas an inverted triangle communicates instability, perhaps due to the brand being dynamic or all about motion and adaptability. Like the last logo we looked at, the dog is an inverted triangle. Action, movement, and I guess with Rondo Floral, the triangle is planted in the ground. The shop is homely and stable. Plants are peaceful and will always be there. These pastel colors resemble the soft colors and nature of flowers too, so I guess it works. I'm just not as big of a fan of it. But here's Grow Shores. Well, that's a really cute and clever name. It's a grocery store that grows their own produce. They sure do grow. Grow Shores. That's clever, and I really, really like it. But the smiling tomato between two fidget spinners is a bit odd? Wait a sec, I'm sorry. It's not a tomato, it's a tomato berry. Without the spikes. Like a tomato. Perhaps the idea with the fidget spinners is that they are planters from the top down. Or maybe they're the wheels on the side of a conveyor belt. Like the conveyor belts at grocery stores. Uh, well, half of the jobs they give your Pokemon involve grocery delivery, so maybe that's the idea. The four wheels transporting a tomato berry. It's a really cute logo, but it's not too obvious about what it means. But at least the color choice is nice. A lot of food-related companies use the red-yellow side of the color wheel because it supposedly is a color that makes us hungry. We naturally associate it with good food. But maybe that's just because all of these big food logo name brands use that color. And that's why we associate it with food, huh? Which came first? Well, another food company in Galar is Turfield Orchards. An orchard in Turfield. Their logo is a simple three-color depiction of their orchards under the sun, in similar fashion to other farming logos. I mean, I don't know if you could really get more generic than this for a farm or orchard, uh, but it's good to take advantage of natural lines and whatever it is you're trying to depict in your graphic design. And since crops are often planted in straight lines and orchards are especially that on hills, well, there you go. It's perfect. And what makes the plants grow? The sun, bam. Easy logo. Well, let's look at another Pokemon logo. It's Pelipper Couriers. Okay, I love that. They are a delivery company with a Pelipper for a mascot. Pelipper have been used for delivery services in the franchise before, so that's perfect. Wings make naturally good speed lines, and speed is one of the most important parts of a delivery company. Yellow, as a color, is energetic too, and also is a Pelipper. Uh, the blue on Pelipper also resembles the sky. And also, these letters here, perfectly resemble Pelipper's eyes. They took a fictionalized letter and made it line up perfectly with this. That's so nice and I quite like it. Another shipping company is Lapras Shiprights and their subsidiary Surf Shipping. Surf, of course, being the move a Lapras would use to deliver things on its back. This company ships things at the big carrier ship level and also builds and repairs those ships. A Pokemon like Lapras makes the perfect mascot. And then we have the good old Galar Police Service logo. First off, I love that it's a Grappalox. 
because they arrest you with their grabs and tackle you to the ground. At first, I thought this was a taxi, or maybe a ballet service because of the royal look and the little black hat, but I forgot. Galar isn't America. Over here, police logos are super edgy and manly man sharp looking. I forgot that British police tend to be more round and, uh, royalish? Confusing logos aside, we have a super obvious one here, bookmark. Something about this just makes me think owl books. Maybe it's the bird that has a book for hair that we have here. The logo is such a perfect connection of everything here because of our own human history. Owls are seen as wise and smart, book read, and a lot of that is because of Athena, the goddess of wisdom and military tactics, because her symbol was an owl. But does that mean there's a Greek culture in Pokemon history? Well, either way, it's reflected in their logo designs. Another easy peasy one is this one. I mean, it just screams mail service. First off, it's red like most British post boxes. Plus, it's got an H and an M for it for Her Majesty's Royal Mail. Oh, I just realized that's an envelope. Good Lord. <laughs> I'm really good at looking too deep into things, aren't I? The thing about good logos is that they should be really easy to understand. Typically, a good rule of thumb is if I were to visit a country where I do not speak the language, I could still go anywhere around and have a vague idea of what things are. I should be able to find food or any other important amenity just by the way the logos look. Take the Galar Mines, for instance. I don't need to know what that text says. I just see a pick and a hard hat. If Yeah, boom, that's a mine. Or take the record store. It's a picture of the product I want to buy. Like mom and pop restaurants that sell burgers? You should probably have burgers in the logo. Now it doesn't matter what language you speak. Everyone loves a good burger. Another good example of this would be like the Chili's logo because it's just, it's literally a chili with an S. Actually, Galar has quite a few of these logos that just tell you what they are really easily, just boom like that all these. They all get what they do across really easily, though they don't really stand out perfectly amongst the crowd. The more logos you have that are just getting across what they sell, the more generic they become and thus your business might suffer. It's a very tricky balance. Oh look, it's Harold! Or, I mean, I guess the, the cozy fried chicken kitchen place man. It's the reference that you definitely know. Uh, like, like the face of the KFC man. These logos are only good because they created a brand name for themselves already. Like Pepsi or KFC. I would never get them without the context of knowing what they are or without the name though. So on their own, not great logos to start with. Which is why they didn't start with that. Like, look at their history. Similarly, we also have number one pharmacy. We get that it's a school of it in a lab coat of, of sorts, but I mean, is it a multivitamin company? Is it holding juice? No, it's drugs or medicine. These mascot logo designs are always a toss up because you either get it or you don't. Why is Squub it? Is it just cause it's cute? Here's another mascot logo and possibly one of the worst logos in the game. I mean, look at it. Yeah, what do you think when you look at it? It's a Badoo. Got it. No. Do they sell things or is it a service? It's a service. Uh, okay. Is it a nursery? Because it's a baby Pokemon and also a plant. So it's like a plant nursery and also a baby nursery. Is it lawn care? All wrong. It's Badoo Drop In. Yeah, it's an in logo. They don't even have letters under it to tell you in or hotel or anything. It's not even like a mega franchise or something where like, oh, people see a green square with a Badoo on it and they immediately know what it is. No, it's just this one in. It's like that alligator for clothes. That has like no correlation to the product. Ooh yeah, buy our pink polos and pop-up collars. We put a cool predator on it. A predator for all the predators to relate to. Actually, speaking of clothing companies, there are quite a few well-designed designer logos. I mean, look at this. It just screams hip and punk or celebrity, which to be honest, is a terrible kind of name. Uh, but the logo does look nice. It's like a refined luxury brand. And then there's, of course, Densuku, which we talked about earlier, and finally, Porcini, or Porcini. I don't know, it's the mushroom. I don't know how to pronounce that one. Uh, but it's also a clothing brand, and it may be the weakest of the clothing brand logos, but I guess people in the world must relate to the brand and this logo because it's well-loved. 
I had no idea it was a mushroom though, but it does look kind of like Masharna, doesn't it? Or Muna? Yeah, it's Muna. Oh, and then there's Daily Discoveries, which I wasn't sure it was clothing related at all. Like what, is... what the heck is that? Is that like a, a tamarind? It took me forever to figure it out. It's, it's Wulu hair. The, the hank of yarn thing that Wulus have for earbuds. Which, now that I know that, yeah, that sealed the deal for me. <laughs> That's really cool, and I like it, but it's kind of it's kind of weak because it took me forever to figure that out, and I look at Pokemon for a living. So I'd suggest a rebranding for them. Maybe just do a whole Wulu, or maybe a yarn ball with a Wulu head sticking out of it, or a yarn ball as a Wulu, and it has the hank of yarn sticking out of it. I don't know. But here's the Macrocosmos Megacorp brand, which is well implemented, I think, personally. It's a big C for Cosmos. Duh. And they have eight differently sized little blips up in there to represent the planets of the solar system. Very nice. And there's the little tiny icon in the middle to get across what this particular branch of the Mega Corporation does, and they're all being consumed by the corporation. <clears throat> and yet, we see that the television logo is different. It's slightly less corporate to be more friendly seeming, get people to trust them a bit more. But it's still very professional. And then finally, there's this last one, which may look like a dog toy company, but it's actually uh, Macrocosmos's Macronet. It's the internet provider of Galar. Look, it's, it's, like, it's like a globe with all the like wires connecting it. And then there's a yamper tail sticking out of it. It's actually quite cute. But looking at their banking, insurance, cargo, and freight kind of logos, they all share this business professional look. It's the letters for MC or MCA with a split colored font in order to be unique and memorable without being too childish or fun because it's a very serious topic. It's banking and insurance, ooh, adult things. And now an even quicker firing round for the fun ones that I really like, but don't have much to say about, like Timber Builders. I love the little windows in the back of their logo, and whatever letter this is supposed to be, it looks like the, the little wood that they carry, right? Steelix Rail! I love the little cross section of a Steelix, and the railroad track in the middle of it is pretty quick and easy. It's, it's easy to tell that it's a rail company. Wind and Monorail's logo just looks like the London Underground's logo. like actually just the same, but the colors are changed. But it's perfect because the top of it is blue, like the sky, because it's not underground anymore, it's a monorail. Hua Gua Hot Pot, I'm probably mispronouncing that, is perfect because it's a picture of a hot pot. A plus, simple, but the colors, boom, it just screams that genre of food. A Galar Taxi is so cute. I love the little Corvid that it's got because it's it's not a perfect Corviknight, which makes me even more happy. It's a stylization of a Corviknight, and stylization is very important to logos. Imagine if this had all the, like, Corviknight details, it'd be ugly. And lastly, the Galar Pokemon League logo. It's straight up just real sports colors. It's like the MLB or NBA logos, but a Pokeball. And the Gigantamax clouds, and it's... Pretty great. And that will have to be the note we end on because this video is already pretty long for a video about logos. If I didn't mention a logo, it's because I hated it. I'm just kidding. Uh, I just don't think it was worth mentioning compared to all these other ones. There are a lot of logos that are just text and so it's kind of hard to judge them, I guess. But the farm one, the dairy one, this is a good font. That's a really good font for that. But uh, yeah. That was a quick look at Galar's graphic design, or it's Galaraphic design. I am the best me that I can be. Never stop using your noggin.